Your Excellency, the only leader that we know in our country, Baba, we welcome you to Kisumu. Your Excellency, the Governor of the Great County of Kisumu, and I want to borrow from the Speaker to ride on the protocols earlier set, but with a special mention of Wana Kiwasko. Kiwasko Uwe, Umar, Uruwako Baba, Eane Luedo Kama, 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 Karibu Sana, Your Excellency. At the core of the Governor's agenda is the provision of clean, potable water. Now, the agency with the majority of that mandate on behalf of the governor is Kisumu Water and Sanitation Company. Now we are here today to join you in welcoming your new home. A clear testament that other than the provision of water, you're also keen on the welfare of your staff and the welfare of your customers. So we are proud of you and we are very grateful. Now, uh, before I invite the governor, we have a team here that is helping the governor to deliver on his mandate. He is the vision bearer, but he has a team around him. So if you're on such team who sits in the cabinet, I would like at this point to recognize you, so please be upstanding. On my far left is uh, Waziri John Aweti, who is in charge of education. Then Judith, Judith Oluoch, who is in charge of public service. Then we have Dr. Greg Ganda in charge of health and sanitation. Waziri Salman Orimba, who is in charge of infrastructure. Week for two days. Water service providers, their CEOs, were in Kisumu uh, you know, to benchmark but they also have biannual meetings. They did ask me, um, and I know that uh, the CEO did allude to this earlier, that we need to call out this government because the high cost of living is hurting the urban poor. The high cost of electricity may mean that with the time, either we reduce on how much water we can you know, reticulate, and that will affect the urban poor. So they are asking, and they did that last week, from all over the country, that that uh, message needs to go out so that the government can be called to account, not just in terms of the high cost of electricity, but also the high taxes for extraction of water, so that the people of Kenya can, for once, have some afwini, some relief because water is a provision that we must give our people at a basic level. So I hope that that can also reach the Council of Governors, because they also indicated that they'll be talking to Governor Nyongo to do that as well. Now, with those many remarks, allow me now to invite... I thought that music was going on for some time. No. <laughs> Prime Minister Raila Moludinga, all protocol observed. I call him Prime Minister Raila Moludinga, not the former, because there is only one former Prime Minister. That was Jomo Kenyatta. I'm a civil. The second Prime Minister is Raila Moludinga. There has not been any other. I'm a civil. So former is a misnomer. Why here? Prime Minister Right Honorable Raila Moludinga of the Republic of Kenya. All protocols have served. I, I still really wish to start by <coughs> congratulating the board of directors of Kiwasco, led by my dear friend Phyllis Atieno. And for the whole staff and the chief executive, Thomas Odongo, really for the good work you have done. Um, 
I think Vinod said that this was started under chairmanship of Vinod, but that you have finished this building in one year is something worth appreciating. I'm a you. Uh, it's very good work and, and work well done. We are all proud of it. You as board of directors were very lucky that you had a private partner, the National Bank of Kenya, which was ready to give money when you needed it. I think you must thank the National Bank of Kenya too for the partnership you've had. I must give you. Thank you very much. And finally, the contractor, who always, who always performs in time. In Kisumu County, Mr. Prime Minister, we have had a problem with contractors. People who get jobs, they don't have the capacity. They begin depending on the county to give them money to construct. And I've told my people, if somebody comes, however sweet they talk, but they don't have the capacity to construct, don't listen to them. But DG, <laughs> somehow they still listen to some. <laughs> I think that habit should stop. But here, are we agreed? Because you can see we are proud of this because the contractor was capable of delivering. Mr. Prime Minister, I think this contractor, one of these days, one of these days, I will not say more. Uh, Kiwasko, your job of delivering, as your CEO has said, is on the way and is being done well, Phyllis. But one thing I just want to bring to your attention, something that as a governor I really don't like, this idea of our attitude towards so-called informal settlements. Why are we calling these people informal settlements? It creates an attitude that when all is done well, then you can think of informality over there. And I think we should get that thing out of our mind. It is the inheritance we have of a city where poor people live in a certain area in housing. Though done cheaply than ours, they are thin houses and nonetheless. We must provide services to these people or those areas just as we provide services elsewhere. We must provide good roads, good water system, sewage, drainage, electricity, so that although we are still awaiting to give them good housing, but these services must be there adequately as they need them. Are we together? That's why I really welcome this program of KISIP. The other day you saw us launching roads in Manyata. Our intention within the next three years is to provide adequate road network to all these settlements that you call informal. Are we together? Even it means getting some more from our budget, but please, let us first of all, as a county, provide the services. And then people in their private capacity can build the homes. We too can come with affordable housing, real affordable, not this one being talked about, you have seen. There should really be affordable housing for our people. So, Prime Minister, as you launch this uh, good water project, which is going to be provided in the whole of Kisumu, it is part of our ambition to make Kisumu a place to feel at home by all those people who live in Kisumu. Whether in Manyata or Bunga or Nyalenda or Milimani or Pembetatu, we should all feel at home that when we are going to bed, you switch on a light. When you wake up, we put it on, it is still there. When you go to your toilet, you flush it. When you come back from market, it's still there. Are we agreed? So Kiwasko, thank you so much for helping us meet service provision to the whole of Kisumu, no matter where we live, so that all of us can feel at home in our county. Are we together, Mr. Prime Minister? Let me take this opportunity to invite you to come and address these people and launch this fantastic opportunity. Mr. Citizens, the Governor, uh, Mama Kisumu, all protocols of, of serve, ladies and gentlemen. I am very delighted to have the opportunity to be here this morning. I feel very nostalgic standing before you here to talk about what and Kisumu. 
Because, you know, not far away from where I'm um, standing, behind here, is the Kaloleni Estate. I saw the, the MCA of this, uh, this, this is what it's called? Yeah? Kaloleni Shalimua Ward. Yes. Um, that is where I was actually brought up, in Kaloleni. And um, water was a problem, but there's water in within the estate. There are water kiosks. So people used to go and buy water. You know, uh, one of the people who was operating, the one next was called Ojijo. And one day the water was uh, two cents. In those days there was a coin called Hela. So, so <laughs> Debe was two cents. And uh, they would charge you one cent to bring it home. But otherwise you'd go and, and, and buy it there and bring it home. But it was always available there. You also had um, public lat latrines or toilet, bucket uh, latrines, which were constructed. And people would go there, and in the evening there would be a cart, ox drawn cart, which was coming to collect the waste. And you see, these people were living not far away from uh, near where Fafa Hall is. They had been brought in from Uganda. Because the local community would not do that job. They were called the Yoakele or Jokukwakidi. And uh, they would come in the evening and they had scat and they were saying, I know, I know. The, those, that, those cows were trained, they knew where to. <laughs> navigate the corner and clean this place and they would put jays in the those uh, buckets every evening so it was done very well so the municipality did not ignore any other place as in formal settlement but I want to tell you the genesis of this idea of informal settlement because as you know I'm um, I've been the member of parliament for Kibra, the biggest uh, slum in, I could say, almost in the entire Africa. You see, the colonial government was very particular about settlements, and they were providing services wherever the people lived. But after independence, because there was this influx of people moving from rural areas into town. Rural urban migration is a universal phenomenon. But here people did not plan for it. So the government then said people should go back to Mashambani. Well, what we're talking about, you know, Rudy Mashambani. They even called a song. Mzee Kasema Rudy Mashambani Hakuna Kazi. People went back to Mashambani, found nothing good, useful to do, quickly came back to town. But the government did not put up shelters for these people to respond to the needs. That's how people started putting up structures in areas in the periphery of the city. Then they actually christened them as informal settlements. There's no sanitation, no water, no toilets, no roads. Uh, to this spread around, like today, 60% of Nairobi's population live in what is called informal settlers, settlements. And when at one time in my earlier incarnation as a minister for roads, public works, and housing, I came up with a program called Slum Upgrading to upgrade those so-called informal settlements. But that is a subject for another day. <coughs> Let me just say that here, water is life. Whoever addresses the problem of water addresses the, pro the fundamental right and the development issue. I therefore wish to congratulate the governor, my good friend, Professor Anyang Nyong his team and the development partners who 
that have enabled the county to consolidate the various subsectors involved in this critical area and bring them under one roof. I believe this effort will result in improved people's health and prosperity through seamless coordination and delivery of critical programs in water, sewage and sanitation services. Kisumu County and the city have grown in profile and stature in recent years thanks to the effort by the leadership to focus on delivery of critical services that is required for all cities and all administrations. We must not drop the ball. And Kisumu has been rated one of the cleanest cities in Africa, one of the ten cleanest cities in Africa. One of the most critical services a government should be able to provide to citizens is clean water, no matter where the people live, whether in the city, towns or villages uh, in rural areas. The truth, however, is that for millions of our people in this country and the Lake Victoria Basin, access to clean water, a very basic right, which is a matter of life and death, remains a dream even right here in the city. The result is that diseases like cholera and diarrhea are still claiming lives and continue to be leading causes of mortality, particularly among children. I therefore commend the county for every effort to consolidate and expand the provision of water and sanitation services. And I was very particular during the briefing session before we came down here. You are not just looking for water for drinking. The value of water in the economic chain is long. Our women need to deliver in facilities with water and sanitation, which also give the newborn babies a realistic chance to survive. <coughs> Industries need huge quantities of water to operate. Any investor who wants to come to invest in Kisumu will look for two things, energy and two, water. You have sufficient water. Those are factors which helped to make decisions. Investment in water and sanitation, therefore, make for very good economics. The World Health Organization estimates that the economic return on sanitation spending is $5.5 for every $1 invested, making it among one of the largest development dividends of any single intervention in people's lives. In this regard, therefore, I want to encourage Kisumu and all our counties to invest in water recycling, which means cleansing wastewater to make it reusable and also invest in rainwater harvesting. There is no point whatsoever for a heavy rainfall to cause floods only for a brief drought to cause acute water shortage. Nyando is a good uh, point. With adequate investment and planning, we can make water readily available when or where it is needed. We therefore also need to invest in the quality of the water environment of the regions, the, these rivers and lakes which have been severely polluted by social and economic activities. This will give new lease of life to other water-based activities like fishing and farming. For instance, when we talk of reforestation, let us think of restoring not just the hills and mountains, but also restoration of the indigenous plantations of our river and lake basins that support the natural breeding of fish. Our counties, therefore, need to, be, to champion the planting of wetland plants like Odundu, Asao, Togo, etc., 
to safeguard these water bodies to protect sustainable fishing and other economic activities. For all this to succeed, we need to invest in forward planning. Cities, regions, and countries that succeed are those that invest in and respect the results of planning. Over a prolonged period, running into centuries, cities like Paris, Berlin, London, Washington DC, and Tokyo, among others, have been able to retain their identity and provide critical services like transportation, health, water, sanitation, energy, education, and fiber optics because they embrace planning from the start and stuck to it. In these cities, the bus stage, the fire station, the train station, the hospital, the university, the recreational park, the social hall, the cinema hall, all remain where the, the planners designated them to be and all serve the purpose they were meant to serve. In these cities, you cannot turn a residential area into a commercial center. You cannot create your own bus station or build a house where a sewer plant was meant to be. You cannot turn a pedestrian walkway into a market or turn a public market into a private business. And you cannot turn a cinema hall or a park into a private business or a church. That is the way it should be. That is the way Kisumu must be. Everything in its right place. Today, our greatest source of failure as a country is not the lack of funds, personnel, or knowledge. It is the lack of planning. Our cities are clogged by traffic because we have created bus stages where they were not supposed to be. We have created markets where they were not supposed to be. Sewage systems are not working because we built on, clogged or broken them. I know this from experience in this city. When we started cleaning this city with the former mayor, who is now a member of parliament for Kisumu Town East, we found people had turned public toilets into residences. Currently, Nairobi is mourning its dead and treating hundreds of injured because the city ignored planning and allowed a gas-filling plant where none was supposed to be. Even our roads as a country have become death traps because planning was long discarded. Every bus or matatu owner wants to create his own stage, decides when to leave Nairobi or for Kisumu, or Kisumu for Nairobi, when to arrive and when to embark on the return journey. Our cities and towns need investment, both local and foreign. But investors can't put their money where there is neither order nor the planning, not, not law. We may thrive in chaos for a while. In the long run, however, we lose. Today, businesses are migrating from Nairobi to Kajiado and Machakos because at some stage, Nairobi abandoned planning and embraced skills. They are paying for it. It is true that if you don't plan today, you're planning to fail tomorrow. Kisumu must avoid a similar fate by embracing and sticking to planning. In this regard, therefore, I encourage the administration of this county to proceed with its plans to create order that is necessary for the provision of services 
that in return will attract investment and create the much needed well paying jobs for our people. We cannot and we must not thrive in queues. Building codes, zoning and land use planning that leads to provision and maintenance of services like electricity, water supply, emergency responses, drilling systems and protection of assets must be adhered to. It cannot be done by an individual. The residents of this city and the entire county must get together and rally behind plans to create a sustainable county and city. The city must remain clean and orderly. It must be bright and well lit at all times. Its citizens and parents must have schools, health facilities, and well-paying jobs. It takes personal commitment of the local administration, the residents, and the elected community leaders. I wish to conclude by congratulating the governor for leading the way. I know that sometimes this is painful, but like I said last time, that nothing comes easy. If you want, if you have a boil and you want it expelled, it will be pain. Before a bath, there are bath pangs. The ladies are not comfortable. But after the birth of the, the, the baby, the mother will laugh, will smile because she has got a baby. And therefore, we know that there will be pain in what is being done here. It will be unpopular to do this, to do this kind of work. Like I know the name that is on the lips of most people in town, or Mr. Balawanga. I congratulate him. It can be done and it must be done. Thank you very much.